I just want to honor uh, God, and I want to open up with prayer. And uh, like my sister April said, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to the point real quick. I don't plan on being before you long, but I believe that there is a word from the Lord that is going to confirm everything that has been said already, and it's just going to tie it in, and it's going to be relevant. And I'm here for uh, for three reasons. I'm here to encourage, to empower, and to uplift not just the young people, but everybody that is on here, because in this season we need to know that we are qualified. So, Father, I thank you and I praise you and I give your name glory and honor and praise. Father, I pray that you would bless, oh God, everyone that is on this live. Bless those who are attending now. Bless those who will see this in the future. Let this be a word relevant for them right now. Father, I pray for your anointing, the anointing that makes that not only makes preaching easy, but effective. I pray, oh God, that you remove all fear in the name of Jesus. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Father, you get the glory. I just ask that you give us the victory. Ask that you will open our ears to hear you, open our eyes to see you, and open our hearts to receive what it is that you're saying. Father, do it for your glory, and we'll give you all the glory, all the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Um, I want I want to uh, bring to your attention a, a scripture, a couple of them, uh, but I'm coming from First Samuel chapter 17. I'll be reading in your hearing verse 30 through 32 through 40. That is First uh, Samuel chapter 17, verse 32 through 40. And to keep it all the way G with you, uh, we could have stopped at the prayer that our sister was praying. Um, because it was a powerful, powerful prayer. And she confirmed some things, which let me know that I was in the right place uh, for what the Lord has given me. So thank you for that beautiful and wonderful prayer, Sister April. And keep on praying. Yeah, something happened when you pray. Something happened when you were praying. And I thank God for your obedience and every word that was released through your mouth. And I agree with you. Again, I'm coming from 1 Samuel chapter 17. I'll be reading in your hearing verse 32 through 40. And our key verse will be verse uh, 37. And when you have it, my bad, y'all. When you have it, it reads as thus. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, huh? but a youth. And, and a man, and he a man of war from youth, from his youth. And David said unto Saul, your servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smit him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by the beard and smit him and slew him. Your servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing that he has defied the armies of the living God. Verse 37, David said, moreover, the Lord who delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with you. And Saul armed David with his armor and put and, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of mail and David girded his sword upon his armor and and he has said and he has said to go for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these for I have not proved them. And David took them off. Verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag. Yeah. Which he had even in the script um, and his sling was in his hand and he drew nigh to the Philistine. Once again, I've read in your hearing uh, first Samuel, first Samuel chapter 17 verses 32 through 40. Our key verse is verse 37. And that is, I'll read it again. David said, moreover, the Lord who delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go, the Lord be with you. And I'm going to encourage you from the subject this morning. One word, I got one word for you. And that word is qualified. Somebody put it in the comments. Somebody say qualified. Do it again. Somebody declare, shout it out loud, qualified. 
So in order for us to, to understand where we are going, I'm sorry, I didn't even put that notebook up, my bad, y'all. But in order for us to understand where we're going, a pretext is necessary. So it is necessary for me, I believe, to give you some background to our introduction to David. For uh, we are introduced to David in chapter 16, 1 Samuel chapter 16. And there you'll find that God instructs Samuel uh, to go to Jesse's house to anoint the next king over Israel. So when Sa Samuel makes his way to Jesse's house uh, and he lets it be known why he is there, Jesse calls all of his sons together and all of them, I'm um, sorry, mostly all of them. He calls, I believe, seven of the eight of them, if I'm, if I'm correct. So he calls them together and all seven of them uh, 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 are presented, or I should say, walk past Samuel um, so that the Lord can tell Samuel which one is anointed to be king or which one he has appointed to be king over Israel. And after all seven pass by, the question is asked in verse 11, is there anyone else? And that's when David is called. That's when David comes on the scene. This lets us know that David David is the unlikely choice. He doesn't have the appearance of a king. He doesn't look like his brother did, nor do nor does Saul have that same response when he saw his older brother Eliab. Because uh, I believe it said in the text, when, when Saul saw Eliab, he said, this must be the one. But God's choice uh, of David was never based on what he looked like. I'll say that again. While everybody is choosing based on what people look like. And while many people are in position based on what they what they look like, God's choice of David was never based on what he looked like on the outside, nor someone else's opinion of him. But God's choice of David was based on what was on the inside. Because in verse seven, God tells Samuel that man looks at the outward appearance, but God is the one that looks at the heart. And while David wasn't the people's choice, God made clear to Samuel that David is his choice. And we find this to be true over in verse one of chapter 16, when God tells Samuel, I have provided for me a king among the sons of Jesse. Somebody declare, I am God's choice. I said it before, I'll say it again. We're living in a time where we have a lot of Saul's and not enough David's. Saul represents the people's choice, but David is a symbolic representation of God's choice. Saul represents what the people want. Saul represents what the people say, but David is a representation of what God says. Somebody say, I'm God's choice. So the text goes on to say that David enters the room and God tells Samuel to anoint him for he is the one. Somebody say, I am the one. Yeah. He says, yeah, get up and anoint him because he is the one. I can recall a while ago, I read it. I, I was either look, listening to someone or reading um, an illustration of what happened when David walked in the room. And 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 what it did, what it said was that uh, when Saul arrived at Jesse's house at the beginning and he thought that Eliab was the one who was going to be king because he looked like it. I believe the illustration said that Saul went to go pour the oil from the horn on Eliab Eliad's head and the oil did not flow. But when we fast forward and we get to the point where David is anointed, it said that as soon as David entered, the oil began to flow, which is a symbolic representation that this is the one that God called. Somebody say, I am the one. So David is anointed. And guess what, young people? He's anointed at age 15. That's what the book tells us. He's anointed at age 15. And the text says that the spirit of the Lord came upon him from that day forward. Somebody declare, I am qualified. Yeah, we're getting closer to our text. So, so, so if you read a little further, you'll come across in verse 17 of chapter 17, we find that David is sent by his father to the battle between Israel and the Philistines to drop food off to his brothers and to make sure that everyone was all right. And while he is there, the text says that he hears Goliath challenging Saul and Israel's army. Yeah, and in verse 26, he asks two questions. He says, what shall be done for the man that kills this Philistine and removes the reproach from Israel? And then he asks another question. He says, who 
who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Who is this dude? Who is not? Who, who does he think he is? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God. What you have to understand is that before David arrives to the scene, yeah, uh, uh, Saul and Israel's armies are intimidated for 40 days by Goliath. And he comes out for 40 days talking the same junk, saying the same thing, running the same line. And soon as he hits the scene, Israel gets nervous. Israel gets scared and they begin to retreat. But David hears about it. Yeah. And David says, who, what shall be done for the man that will handle this situation? What shall be done with, for the man that's going to fix this? And who does he think he is? Who does he think he is talking to? Who do he think he coming at, sir? Yeah, I, I know you don't want no parts. I can see David say, son, you don't want no parts of this. But who are you to defy the armies of the living God? So, so back to the text word uh, of David's conversation gets back to Saul and Saul sends for David. Yeah, now we're at the meat and the potatoes. We've reached our text. In verse 32, David said, let no man's heart fail because of him, for I will go out and fight him. Saul's response to David in verse 33 is you are not able to go against this Philistine because here's why. Number one, you are too young. And number two, he's been fighting since his youth. He has been a warrior from youth. Allow me to suggest to you that Saul isn't addressing David's physical age alone, but he is questioning his ability to go against the giant based on what he sees. I'll say it again. When Saul says, David, you're too young to go. He's not just talking about his age, but he's saying, you don't look like you're strong enough. You don't look like you're good enough. You don't look like you can do it. Yeah, he begins to question who he is because he is looking at him based off what he sees. He's looking at him based off only what he knows about David. In other words, Saul is saying, you are unqualified. You're not good enough. You don't have what it takes, and you're not enough. And to be quite honest, if all we are looking at is David's history or what we know about David so far, David is simply a shepherd boy. David is simply a boy watching sheep. And, and we also know that he is a worshiper. Yeah, it doesn't say much about him fighting. We don't even know. Yeah, Saul is saying basically like, I, I don't even know if you're ready for this. But nevertheless, uh, somebody shout, there is more to me than what you see. Come on, put it in the comments, say there is more to me than what you see, because what you call a shepherd boy, yes, Lord, God calls a king, what you call just somebody playing skillfully an instrument, God calls a worshiper, yeah, there is more to me than what you see, so David responds to Saul, we're going somewhere, David responds to Saul in verse 34 through 37, and I'll read it again, he said, David said unto Saul, your servant has kept his father's sheep. And there came a bear and a lion and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went, yeah, the shepherd boy, yeah, the worshiper. I went and I smit him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by the beard and I smit him and slew him. Your servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be as one of them, seeing that he has defied the army of the living God. In the verse 37, David said, moreover, the Lord who brought me out, yeah, before, the Lord who made a way before, the Lord who gave me the strength before, more than that, the Lord who has anointed me, yeah, to be in this position. He gave me the strength to defeat the lion, and he gave me the strength to defeat the bear, and he's going to be the one that gives me the strength, yes, Lord, to defeat this Philistine. If you will allow me preacher's privilege, I I come to say in my mind, David said, when Saul says, you're not, you're, uh, you're only but a youth and you don't have what it takes and basically you're unqualified. David looks at Saul and says, sir, you must not know about me. Come on, me, I say, you must not know about me. You must not know my story. You must not know where I came from and you don't know what I've been through. So on the outside, you may just see a shepherd boy, but on the inside, yeah, I got some oil on the inside. 
inside. I got some power on the inside. I got the living God. Yes, Lord, the Lord of hosts on the inside. Somebody declare I am qualified. Yes, yeah, somebody declare I am qualified. Put it in the comments, comments, I am qualified. So what does it mean to be qualified? Yeah, it means that you are fit and you are equipped and you are prepared. Somebody declare, I am qualified. Yeah, put it in the comments, I am qualified. Say it till it hits your spirit, I am qualified. Being qualified means that you are experienced and you are capable and you are able. Somebody declare, I am qualified. Yes, Lord. It means that you are chosen for this and that you were created for this and that you are indeed built for this. Somebody declare I am qualified. <laughs> and not only are you qualified, but you are enough. I believe in my spirit. Somebody needs to hear that this morning, that you are enough. What he's giving you is enough. What's inside of you is enough. Yeah, how he made you is enough. And it may not look like everybody else, but what you got is enough because you are qualified qualified. Yeah. And here's the thing about being qualified. When God qualifies you and when God anoints you and when God calls you out, you don't need Saul's armor to defeat your enemy. Yeah. That's good. I'll say it again. When God anoints you and God calls you, you don't need Saul's armor to defeat your enemy. You don't need somebody else's oil to stand against Goliath, but you're already anointed and you're already Ready, ready, huh? And you're already qualified because you are already enough. Somebody declaring that I am enough. I know we live in a world that says if you don't look the part, then you're not good enough. I know they've got their own credentials and they have their prerequisites of what is required of you. But I come to tell you that if God caught you, if he chose you, if he anointed you, baby, then you are enough. Not only are you enough, you are qualified. Here's the good thing about it. When God calls you and anoints you, and when God qualifies you, this is so good. You don't need a stage, and you don't need a position, and you don't need a title to prove it, but your testimony, yes, Lord, I'm happy about it, speaks for itself. You have experience, yeah. The oil that was poured on you speaks for itself, for it couldn't flow to another, nor could it be given to another. But when you stepped in the room, the the oil started flowing, flowing. That means that your testimony speaks for itself and the oil speaks for itself. And you have something that your enemy doesn't have. You have something that the world doesn't have because you're called and you're chosen and you're set apart because you're a royal priesthood and a holy nation. You have something that this world doesn't have. You have the Lord of hope. Yes, Lord, on your side, you have the God of Israel's army on your side. So in the words of Paul in Timothy chapter 1, verse 4 and 12, um, I'm sorry, chapter... First Timothy chapter four, four, verse 12. Don't let anyone despise your youth because you are qualified. Don't let anyone tell you that you're not good enough because you are qualified. Don't let anyone tell you you don't have what it takes because you are qualified, not by man, but you're qualified by God. That means you have everything that you need on the inside. And I'm almost done. The most amazing part about being qualified is this. Come on, catch it, y'all. The most amazing part about being qualified is perfection is not a prerequisite. I'll say it again. The most amazing part about being qualified is this. Perfection is not a prerequisite. My college students knows what prerequisites are. They are the courses you need before you get to the course that you need. But perfection is not a prerequisite. Oh yeah, to be qualified. That means it is not required because God knew everything about you before he form you as the man of God preached on Friday from Jeremiah chapter one before I formed you I knew you yeah and I called you knowing all I knew about you I still called you knowing all I knew about you. yes Lord I still chose you knowing all I knew about you I still qualified you with your messy self yes you with your sinful self yes you with your confusion 
yourself, yes, you. Depressed and all, yes, you. Broken and all, yes, you. Bitter and bruised and all, yes, you. The you that was ab abused, yes, you. The you that was rejected, yes, you. The you that said there'll never be nothing, I'm talking to myself. The you that said they'll never make it. The you who used to be homeless. The you who used to have nothing at all. God says, knowing all I knew about you, I qualified you. And one of the many amazing things about God, one of the things that makes him amazing is that he's a God that doesn't change his mind. So you are what he said you are, and you are who he said you are, and that alone makes you qualified. You're everything that he called you to be. You're everything that he birthed you to be. And I don't care, as my sister said, what pit or dark cave you may be in. Ha! I don't care where you may find yourself, but on today, I come to declare that you're still qualified. I don't care what you did on last night, and I don't care how many times you tripped over the same problem. I don't care about your addictions or your hangup, and I don't care what people say about you. Baby, you're still qualified. Yes, Lord, for those who have been diagnosed with ADHD, for those who are on medicine, I declare to your spirit that you're still qualified. Qualified. You're everything that he said you are. He what he made you, oh God. Yes, Lord. He says that I am beautifully and wonderfully made. That's what the Bible says. He made you beautiful and wonderful. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper for you're qualified. No word spoken against you shall come to pass because you're qualified. And I don't care who don't like you. Yeah, you've been anointed for this season. You've been anointed for this time. You've been birthed with purpose and you're here for a reason. So tell the spirit of suicide to be quiet. Tell them to back off because you are qualified. You are not the sum total of your past mistakes, but you are qualified. You're better than what you think of yourself because you have God on your side and he's made you qualified. So I want you to be encouraged today. I come to tell someone who's sitting with tears in their eyes. Yeah, you see, the wonderful thing about when God qualifies you, right? So here's the thing. When David steps on the scene, uh, yeah, to the war, yeah, his brother starts some beef with him because his brother is mad that he is there. But his brother, his own flesh, but that tells us that sometimes adversity is going to come from the inside. Sometimes adversity is going to come from people with your last name. Sometimes the greatest hurts that you feel will come from people who declare they love you or are supposed to love you the most. But in spite of what they do, the Bible says, when my mother and my father forsake me, yeah, God is right there. He'll take you up. So even if the adversity is in your own house, even if you have people that's in your own bloodline, telling you that you won't make it. I know what I'm talking about because I heard it growing up myself. Yeah. Telling you that you'll never be anything. Telling you that you'll never amount to anything. Calling you all manner of names. That speaks against who God has created you to be. I come to tell you that you are still qualified. Can I talk about myself? I've been homeless, but I'm still qualified. My mother was on drugs, but I'm still qualified. My father walked away from God, the church and his family, but today he's back and I'm still qualified. Can I tell you how qualified I am? I can remember that when things started falling apart as I was a child and my mother left and my father left. Yeah, I'm telling somebody you're qualified that I can remember at age seven laying in my bed praying for my parents. At age seven, I was offering petitions to the Lord saying, God, bring my family back. God, don't let them die out there. Yes, Lord, I feel your Holy Ghost. At age seven, I can remember praying and crying out to God. And I come to tell you today that he is the healer that he said he is. Because not only did he deliver my mother from drugs, but he brought her back into our life. And not only did he deliver my father, but he's a pastor today. I come to tell you that no matter where you've been, to the parent who may be thinking that you're not good enough, to the parent who may be thinking 
thinking that you don't have enough. I come to tell you as a single parent, you are enough. God has placed that baby and the babies in your life for a reason. And you have to see to it that they get everything of God they need. So that means you, mama, have to be healed. That means you, daddy, have to be free because you got somebody watching you. You got somebody coming up behind you who needs your strength. So get up out of that pit. Yes, Lord, and get up out of that cave and understand today that you are qualified. Not only are you qualified, but everything that you need is already on the inside of you. Everything that you need to make it in this time is already on the inside of you. Everything that you need to stand and defeat Goliath is already on the inside of you. Yeah, and all it's going to take is some faith and one smooth rock in a slingshot. Yeah, it's not going to take a lot to bring them down because you got the Lord of hosts on your side, but you got to show up to the fight and you got to know that fear can live there because Goliath, yes, Lord, has had us in fear for a very long time. And God is looking for a David to stand up and say, I'll go. Knowing that you are already qualified. Is that you? I want to pray for our young people today. I'm going to pray for, for everyone that's watching, whether you be young or old. I'm going to pray for you. I want to pray for your mind. Yeah, for the enemy is after our mind. Yes, Lord, he is after our mind. <laughs> he wants you to believe that you won't make it. He wants you to be consumed with anxiety and fear and depression, but the devil is a liar. You are qualified. You got the power within you to speak to yourself. Yeah. You got the power within you to say, loose here, Satan. You got to go. Yeah. You got the power within you to pull yourself up because you, my dear brother, my dear sister, my dear baby are qualified. So God, we come before you on behalf of this generation, on behalf of those that you have called, chosen, and ordained, on behalf of those that you have qualified before the foundation of the world, we come before you, oh God, asking, oh God, that you would strengthen us to do what you have called us to do. Give us the strength, oh God, to defeat this Goliath once and for all. Whatever has been presenting itself as a giant in our life, whether it be fear, depression, or suicide, whether it be addiction, oh God, or fornication, or anything, oh God, whatever, oh God, that we believe is too strong for us, Father. You have given us the power, oh God, within to defeat it. So we don't stand, yeah, in our own might or in our own strength, but we stand, oh God, in the power of the living God, the God of Israel's armies, the Lord of hosts, the great I am, the creator of all things and the creator of, of me and my brothers and my sisters. Father, you've made us, oh God, so you know all about us, oh God. Father, strengthen us to do the work that you have called us to do. Even Father Bishop Furlow, we pray for him right now in the name of Jesus, as you have given him a charge right now in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would strengthen him to do the work in the name of Jesus. Pray that you would close the mouths of the naysayers. Yes, Lord, because a lot of people got a lot to say, but not a lot of people know his story, oh God. Not a lot of people know what you bought them from and what you're bringing them from, oh God, and what you're bringing them through in the name of Jesus, we pray for every youth leader, oh God, at Eternal Change Church. We pray, oh God, for everyone in position, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you would strengthen them for the fight, that you would give them grace for the journey. We pray, oh God, that the oil, the anointing, oh God, and the power of your Holy Spirit will rest, rule, and abide with them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray for every baby who is viewing, oh God, those now and later, oh God, those who have seen a lot and have heard a lot and experienced a lot in their young age, those who are dealing with rejection and abuse, those who are dealing with abandonment, those who are feeling like they're not good enough, those who are, yeah, dealing with low self-esteem and low self-worth, oh God, we come against, oh God, every spirit and every demonic attack in the name of Jesus, we come against, oh God, every plan of the enemy in the name of Jesus, because we are enough, we have what it takes to stand up against the enemy, we have what it takes to defeat the enemy, we have what it takes because you have qualified 
us. Help us to walk in the power and the authority that you have given us. Help us, oh God, to walk, oh God, in demonstration, oh God. Show yourself mighty and strong on our behalf, oh God. Even with everything that is going on, give us complete victory because we believe that victory belongs to us. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Father, have your way in our life and we'll give your name the glory and honor and praise for the last time. Come on and clap your hands. Give God glory and honor and declare to yourself that I am qualified. Amen. God bless you, everybody. That was such a blessed word, such a blessed, blessed word. I am qualified.